There we go. Cut some slits here to get some oil out of them when they're in the water. Perfect. He's on nicely. What is going on right here? Here we are at the eighth mile road looking for some or something that's gonna bite. Completely different video from what we've been doing lately. We've been catching a lot of drum, but it's time to change it up. We got a brand new Akuma Makara 20. Beautiful setup, blacked out, 100 pound glide under. Brand new rod, look at it, check it out. It still got the tags on there. So if I catch something, I'm gonna leave the tags on here. So we're gonna be droning off some baits. I also got the brand new FD3 drone that we're gonna use. Brand new, never used it before. And what I like about it so far, it's the best of both worlds from the FD2 and the SD4. So we're gonna be flying off some big baits. We got a bunch of mullet, we're ready. Hopefully we can catch something. Oh. Fresh mullet. I love the smell of a fresh mullet. It smells really good. It smells clean, fresh, green. You know what? I, I'm surprised more people don't eat these in Texas. In Florida, they love to eat them. But I mean, as clean as they smell, <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd, be, you'd, you'd figure that they'd be edible. Ah, maybe one day I'll try it. Who knows? All right, so we got the leaders here. We got the third coast. He started making custom 10 foot leaders for me. So this is what we're gonna use in the upper Texas coast. This will line anything encounter up here, guaranteed, anything. You don't need a 15 foot leader up here. I doubt that there's anything over eight feet out here, but just in case. And then I got a 16, six foot casting one. So uh, we're gonna use both of these. We're gonna put this on the 20, the other one on the Makara 10, and then we got a six foot. We're gonna put on the, uh, the Alijos 5. It's brand new FD3. Let's open it up real quick. My cat already got to the sides. George. Perfect, look at that. The brand new FD3. This has the best of both worlds, like the FD2. You, you don't longer have to calibrate this. The SD4, you have to calibrate it three times. I had, I've never had a problem with the SD4. A lot of people did. But with this one here, you no longer have to calibrate it. All you do is put the propellers on, set your stuff up, and you're ready to go. Unlike the FD2, the FD2, you had to attach floats on it. I didn't like that at all. But here it has the floating body of the rest of the Swell Pro. So this is a beast. Hopefully we can catch them today. After I've lightly attached the propellers, I'm gonna use the tool that it comes with to ensure that it's all the way tight. You see, I tightened it as much as I could with my hands, but now when you use a tool, it gives it much more leverage, more grip, check it out. You can tighten it more. And you wanna do that so I feel they don't fly off in mid-flight. It can't happen. And this still has the double drop, which I don't know. I don't think I'm ever gonna use that. But who knows? I'm gonna close it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Oh yeah. Hers bait drop on the FD3. Let's do it. Where are we at there? 100, damn, that's already 130 yards. Dang. Well, 130 meters, that doesn't look like 100. Meters, that's what I was about to say. Meters, bro, not yards, meters. All right, we'll drop it right there then. How far are you at? 130 meters. That's fine. That's perfect right there. That'll work. All right, bait drop. Check it out. Perfect. Hell yeah. Return to home. All right, so right now I'm returning to home, and the difference between the SD4, the SD4, you had a smaller control, and you had an attachment, which this comes with that attachment also, and the attachment goes there, and you put your phone on there. But I, didn't, I personally didn't like it because the sun was too bright. And sometimes I feel like I was hitting interference. But now with this, you have a screen on there and it looks perfect. And the drone is right above our heads now. Here it comes. It should 
take off exactly from where we, it should land exactly where we dropped the bait at, so, which is where it took off originally. Two hundred meters. Two hundred. Yeah, two hundred meters. So that's pretty far out there. There's. I really can't see nothing. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and drop right here. Boom. <laughs> All right. Return to home now. So here we got our next bait. Very controversial bait because either you eat this, which most people do, or you use it for bait. But luckily when I caught these, I caught like four more large ones. So here is the one, the smallest one. So we're gonna keep this. And I had planned in advance, you know what? I'm gonna eventually use this for bait. So let me go ahead and store it and freeze it and then take it out when we need it. So sure enough, here we are. I feel like this is gonna be the, the key right here. That's fresh, but I don't know, man. It's something about everything like Spompano. Look at this, it's green. I'm gonna catch Pompano. I have a good feeling. Something going on on this one right here. Hopefully. Something on. I hope it's what I think it is. It feels a little heavier than normal. So. But something's on, I don't know. can't really feel it. Uh-uh! Get the <laughs> Stupid ass bird. Look at that, it's a little pompano. Hell yeah. Pot liquor. I'm gonna start bringing my a Nerf gun with me. This is a nice pompano right here. Perfect. Look at that, that's what we're looking for right here. This thing. All right, guys, so here we got the 10-foot third coast leader, but now he makes uh, these drone tethers here. Check it out. Right here. Just put it right through the eyelid here. And then now you attach the your bait dropper, the clamp through there, and then you got your line like this. So uh, goes, this goes on the drone, this goes on your line, now you're going to be flying like this. I've never had a problem with just putting the dropper through here. I've been flying drones for two years. Never had an issue, never had any line stuck, but if you want to be on a safe side, then you get these tethers. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mechanism, attach the tether, put that in there. Perfect. It's about maybe like four pounds right now flying out, three pounds. This is our third drop. Aircraft unlocked. We're gonna go 300 yards out. 300 yards. I'm gonna stop it right here. All right, I'm gonna drop the weight. I don't know if you can be able to, you're gonna be able to see this. Here we go. There we go. Yep. We got a nice run here. It's on. He's on. Oh yeah, feels good. Feels decent. Look at that. Wonder what it is. Tarpon. There we go. Yeah, look. 
perfect. Yeah, it feels like dead weight right now. Yeah. They like to eat that. Pompano. Ooh, it's coming in. Here we go. Feels good. Feels, I feel some nice weight to it. It's just a little harder now because we're on the on the sandbar itself. I'm not saying it's a sandbar shark, but it's on a sandbar. So it kind of feels like I'm dragging it in now. <sighs> huh? On a beach. You see it? What is it? It's a very Galveston type of fish. I'll tell you that. Sandbar. Decent. The very guy with some fish right here. Look at me. Look at me. Here, I got it right here. Perfect. All right, guys, check out a nice sandbar right here. We just got it right now on that pompano. It was a good size pompano, too. So I'm really glad that I got this right here. Let me get a nice picture with the reel. It's still in the water, guys. Well, that was it. So I love pompano. Not only do I like pompano, the sharks like it too. Perfect winter bait. I, I, I prefer pompano over sheephead and black drum. All right, that was a nice fight. That was a, really, a very Galveston Upper Texas Coast sandbar. I won the seven footer, but well, that was nice. That's a great way to start off the season. I've been catching black drum for the past like four months. I know everybody's getting tired of watching that. And I'm getting tired of catching that too. So we figured we just got the FD3. We got a bunch of new stuff from Okuma. And I'm glad on the first trip that we used it, we put it to good use and we landed something nice. I prefer using pompano over drum and mullet and sheep it like everybody else because I like, to me, I feel like pompano is really good. I mean, for humans also, but like, it has that really bright yellow color. It's buttery, it's oily, bloody. That is gonna attract sharks. Every time in the winter, I always use pompano with great success. All right, for something like that in a six foot range, this is why I like this Makara 10 right here. I like this right here. This is small. It has 500 yards of 65 pound braid. That six, that six foot sandbar easily, this Makara would have easily handled it. Perfect size. The 20 was overkill. The 50 that I have over there, forget about it. You, you, you sit there and post with a six foot sandbar with a 50 wide, it looks funky. But with this one, which I'm hoping it'll hit next, it'll look sick. And we landed real quick, literally. It was out of, the, out of the water like max a minute. We didn't even take it out of the water because the sandbar, prohibited species, you can't take them out of the water. All right guys, so that's gonna be the end of the video today. You know, since last night, things were starting to work out really good. I wasn't gonna be out here, but then, um, my, uh, my friend offered to, to watch my oldest out of school. He goes, yeah, bring him over, the kids can play. That started real good. And then uh, this morning I went to cast the mullet at my spot, bunch of mullet, and just things started out a little too good. So I was like, you know what? I think we're gonna have a really good chance at catching some nice fish. Luckily we got that one, man. I've been on a dry spill for about two months. I could have caught drum, but you know, I'm done. I'm worn out catching drum and so are you guys, but I'm really glad that we got some. We got to test out the FD3. We got to use the brand new, uh, Makaira 20. I mean, it's awesome. I'm really glad that we caught some. Thanks for watching, y'all.